Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome back to yet another video that is going to try to connect World Cup, soccer and science. In today's video we're going to be talking about a soccer ball that's going to get proportionally larger than a typical soccer ball and we're going to find out what happens if a soccer ball gets ridiculously large. Welcome to What The Math. So, what if we took a soccer ball and started basically pumping a lot of air into it and making it larger and larger and larger, assuming that of course it doesn't pop. So, we're going to be increasing the size of the soccer ball, but we're going to keep the density inside of it constant. Now, I actually had to look this up on the FIFA website to find out what is a typical pressure inside of a soccer ball, and you'd be surprised, actually, it's not well defined at all. As a matter of fact, uh, depending on where you play, the actual pressure inside a soccer ball might be completely different. Uh, for example, if you're playing in lower altitudes, like for example right now they're playing in Moscow or in other parts of Russia, the pressure inside the soccer ball is going to be a little bit lower than if they were playing in countries like Uruguay or Paraguay that are higher in altitude, so the pressure would be a little bit higher. But we're going to go with the more or less average value of approximately one atmosphere, which means that the density is going to uh, stay at around 0 0.07 grams per centimeter cube or about 77 kilograms per meter cube. We're going to maintain this density as we increase the size of the bowl and we're basically are going to be changing things like mass and radius. Now let's start by placing the ball a little bit farther away from Earth and basically increasing the size uh, to a size of, let's say, a large asteroid. So once again, we're going to maintain the density and uh, change the actual size to approximately, let's say, five kilometers. And at this point, this soccer ball is now uh, similar in size to the asteroid that allegedly killed the dinosaurs. Uh, it has enough gravity to actually have its own tiny objects orbiting around it, so we can possibly even place a little basketball around it if... Okay, maybe not at this distance, it's a little bit too close to Earth right now, but if we were to place it farther away, it would be able to actually have its own uh, moons. But this is not where we're going to be ending this, we're obviously going to be going higher and higher, and let's start by making it even larger, 50 kilometers in radius, the mass right now is at 4 times 10 to the power of 16 kilograms. This is a size of a uh, small planetoid or a very, very large asteroid. At 500 kilometers, it's now a size of a dwarf planet. This is kind of similar to most moons uh, around uh, Jupiter and Saturn. And of course, uh, some of the larger objects in the asteroid belt. As you can see now, this is a pretty large soccer ball. We're going to keep going though, and we're going to increase this to make it similar to Earth in size. And as you can see, as soon as we do that, Earth will probably start getting attracted to it because it is now um, uh, kind of similar to mass in Earth. It's only about a fraction of mass of Earth, specifically maybe about uh, one two hundredth but it's already going to be influencing Earth and it's about half the mass of the Moon. The reason it's actually so low in mass in comparison to Earth and in comparison to the Moon, even though it seems to have a larger size, is of course because it's basically made out of air. We made sure that the composition of this ball right now is entirely pure air. It's, it's just nothing but nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, a little bit of argon, essentially what our atmosphere is made out of. Uh, and we maintain a density, so it's basically a, a kind of like a gas, not giant, a gas dwarf, I guess. But we're going to keep going and increasing the size of this object. And now it is 10 times larger than Earth. And it actually swallowed Earth. It's about 6 times, 6.7 times the mass of Earth. And this is when basically Earth disappears. I'm going to keep going in, uh, and increase the size because it's actually now kind of pointless for us to maintain the same size or to increase it uh, in, in small increments. We're going to make this same mass as Jupiter. 
So we're going to go to the mass of about 318 masses of Earth. And we're going to compare this object to Jupiter in size. Now, Jupiter is actually a gas giant. And for this reason, it's going to be um, much larger than Earth would be. But still, the bowl is actually larger in size simply because, once again, the density here is very low. It's basically very, very poofy. And so um, it's much larger in size than Jupiter. So even if I were to place Jupiter around this object right now, in possibly some sort of an orbit, you would see that it's not actually as large in terms of size. But we're going to keep going and let's actually keep increasing the radius of this object until it starts getting even more mass. And we're now are in the regions where it's soon going to be considered to be a brown dwarf, except that it's not because it's very, very gassy and it's very, very low in density. And I think at some point right here, it's going to swallow Jupiter as well. So let's let's actually see what happens. Jupiter has already been attracted to it, so not we're not far from it being completely absorbed. There you go. So this is where we are now basically in the realm of science fiction. Because at this point, uh, this object would be really, really small. It should be a uh, brown dwarf or possibly actually, let's see how many Jupiters it has. Yeah, this, so this is actually a red dwarf already. This should have its own nuclear reaction on the inside. And because it contains a lot of air and there's a lot of um, hydrogen, there's a lot of oxygen inside, it should have some sort of a fusion going on. But it doesn't, because it's just a soccer ball. And it's actually, in terms of size at least, comparable to our sun. It's actually even bigger than the sun. And let's place the sun here, just for fun. Now, at this point, what is going to be really interesting about this object is that because we're not changing density, but only the size and the mass of the object, there is another thing we need to start worrying about and that's surface gravity and this is actually the reason why i wanted to create this video that's just to show you that if we were to create an object with a density of a soccer ball that is going to be large enough it's actually going to create something very 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 interesting and this is not what i expected it for it to make right now but it did create a supernova by colliding with our sun let's actually just erase this because it's going to unfortunately uh cover a lot of things i want to show you but we're going to be increasing the size of this. So we're now going to be measuring our radius in astronomical units. And I'm going to actually start by making this object about 0.2 astronomical units in radius. It's about 4,000 times the mass of our sun. The sun is actually right there. And the surface gravity here is about 645 meters per second square. Now the surface gravity on Earth is about um, 60 or so times less than this. So this is already an object where if you were to stand on the surface, you would feel a huge amount of pressure. You would most likely just break all your bones and become a flattened object. Uh, although not as flattened as you would be on a surface of, let's say, a neutron star. But we're, go we're getting there. So there's actually um, a limit to how large an object can get before it turns into a black hole. And this is exactly where we had it. We're going to turn this into a black hole. And as you can see, these, as the surface gravity increases and approaches the speed of light, we are approaching this particular um, limit when this soccer ball is actually going to turn into a tremendously large black hole. So you can possibly make a guess how large you think it's going to get. And I think we're going to get another supernova right now, or maybe not. Okay, looks like we just swallowed the sun without any supernova. Uh, but I'm actually going to show you a little bit of math here as well. So to calculate how large this object needs to be, we need to uh, assume that basically what we're creating is a gas cloud of one atmosphere containing nothing but air. And uh, we need to find out how uh, much of gas do we need to actually create a black hole out of this bubble. So the answer to this it comes from uh, looking at the formula for the Schwarzschild radius, which is 2gm over c square, which uh, stands for the mass of the object multiplied by the gravitational constant divided by the square of the speed of light. Mass here can be found using the sphere volume and the actual density, but we also have the mass right here. 
And uh, if you do the calculations, you'll discover that the radius that you need for this gas sphere is very, very close to approximately 77 astronomical units, which is about the, uh, well, actually, it's about double the distance of Pluto to the Sun. So let's actually create a soccer ball large enough to be that size. I'm actually going to maybe accelerate this a little bit. We're going to uh, get to the point where we're almost touching Sedna, which one of the farthest objects we we'll ever discovered. And right around here, 78 astronomical units. This is where the surface gravity of this object is going to be practically speed of light. And this is exactly when this gas cloud, this basically air-filled balloon, will become a black hole. So this is actually what you would need to be creating if you were to create a black hole out of a very large soccer ball. It needs to be about 77 astronomical units in radius and basically have a pressure of about one atmosphere on the inside. Um, in this simulation, I think I would start with slightly lower density, so we need to increase this even higher. And somewhere right here, there you go. Surface gravity of, of about one light, uh, speed, one speed of light. This is 93 astronomical units. Now this is equivalent to a supermassive black hole in basically center of different galaxies. Specifically here, we are currently at a mass equivalent to 440 billion masses of the sun, which is actually something like 400,000 times more than the black hole at the center of our own galaxy. That's that's a huge black hole. This is this is about six times more massive than the largest black hole we've ever discovered, which is Ton 618, and the black hole about which I talked about previously. In other words, this is basically as large as these giants get. And in terms of the size, um, obviously this would be a singularity, so it's actually a tiny point in the middle, but the uh, Schwarzschild radius, or the actual edge of the black hole, would be relatively close to where you see it right now. In other words, this ball right here represents some of the largest black holes we have ever discovered in our own universe. But as you can see, this object didn't actually turn into a black hole and remained a soccer ball. And that's because in this particular simulation, all of the human-made objects that you see right here, including tennis balls, uh, pool balls, teapots, actually don't change their properties. So you can actually, interestingly at least, create a black hole without really making a black hole. So for all intents and purposes, this, at least mathematically, is a black hole, size-wise, density-wise, and um, surface gravity-wise. But it doesn't look like one. It doesn't bend the light. It doesn't seem to have any uh, relativistic effects around it. And most importantly, you can possibly stand on it. But in this case, if you try to stand here, it will definitely turn you into an atomic pancake. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to turn this into a black hole. And so now you know how big a soccer ball would have to get to turn into an actual black hole. Hopefully you learn a little bit about uh, black holes and soccer balls in this video, and hopefully now you know what it would take to create one. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye bye. And let's actually finish this by exploding this thing, just to find out what happens if you explode a soccer ball black hole in Universe Sandbox.